Part six of Ghosts and Family Legends, a volume for Christmas by Catherine Crow. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part six, round the fire, sixth evening. The most interesting circumstance of the ghostly kind that I know, as really authentic, said Madame S., is what happened to the late Lord C. when he was a young man it is an old story and you must have heard of the radiant boy but as i had it from a member of the family perhaps she will accept it as my contribution captain s who was afterwards lord c when he was a young man happened to be quartered in ireland he was fond of sport and one day the pursuit of game carried him so far that he lost his way the weather too had become very rough and in this strait he presented himself at the door of a gentleman's house and sending in his card requested shelter for the night the hospitality of the irish country gentry is proverbial the master of the house received him warmly said he feared he could not make him so comfortable as he could have wished his house being full of visitors already added to which some strangers driven by the inclemency of the night had sought shelter before him but that such accommodation as he could give he was heartily welcome to whereupon he called his butler and committing his guest to his good offices told him he must put him up somewhere and do the best he could for him there was no lady the gentleman being a widower captain s found the house crammed and a very jolly party it was his host invited him to stay and promised him good shooting if he would prolong his visit a few days and in fine he thought himself extremely fortunate to have fallen into such pleasant quarters at length after an agreeable evening they all retired to bed and the butler conducted him to a large room almost divested of furniture but with a blazing peat fire in the grate and a shake down on the floor composed of cloaks and other heterogeneous materials nevertheless to the tired limbs of captain s who had had a hard day's shooting it looked very inviting but before he lay down he thought it advisable to take off some of the fire which was blazing up the chimney in what he thought an alarming manner having done this he stretched himself upon the couch and soon fell asleep he believed he had slept about a couple of hours when he awoke suddenly and was startled by such a vivid light in the room that he thought it was on fire but on turning to look at the grate he saw the fire was out though it was from the chimney the light proceeded he sat up in bed trying to discover what it was when he perceived gradually disclosing itself the form of a beautiful naked boy surrounded by a dazzling radiance the boy looked at him earnestly and then the vision faded and all was dark captain s so far from supposing what he had seen to be of a spiritual nature had no doubt that the host or the visitors had been amusing themselves at his expense and trying to frighten him accordingly he felt indignant at the liberty and on the following morning when he appeared at breakfast he took care to evince his displeasure by the reserve of his demeanour and by announcing his intention to depart immediately the host expostulated reminding him of his promise to stay and shoot captain s coldly excused himself and at length the gentleman seeing something was wrong took him aside and pressed for an explanation whereupon captain s without entering into particulars said that he had been made the victim of a sort of practical joking that he thought quite unwarrantable with a stranger the gentleman considered this not impossible amongst a parcel of thoughtless young men and appealed to them to make an apology but one and all on honour denied the impeachment suddenly a thought seemed to strike him he clapped his hand to his forehead uttered an exclamation and rang the bell hamilton said he to the butler where did captain s sleep last night well sir replied the man in an apologetic tone you know every place was full the gentlemen were lying on the floor three or four in a room so i gave him the boy's room but i lit a blazing fire to keep him from coming out 
you were very wrong said the host you know i have positively forbidden you to put any one there and have taken the furniture out of the room to ensure its not being occupied then retiring with captain s he informed him very gravely of the nature of the phenomenon he had seen and at length being pressed for further information he confessed that there existed a tradition in his family that whoever the radiant boy appeared to will rise to the summit of power and when he had reached the climax will die a violent death and i must say he added that the records that have been kept of his appearance go to confirm this persuasion i need not remind you said madame s what a remarkable confirmation was afforded by the life and death of lord c i had never heard these particulars before but i had heard the story of lord c's radiant boy alluded to apropos of the case of the rev mr a who saw a very similar apparition some years ago at c castle i have related this case in the night side of nature i received the particulars from a relation of mr a's who was himself surviving at the time i published it it is curious observed mrs e how many houses in the north of england where i have been lately residing have something of this sort attached to them some friends of mine not long ago heard of a very pretty place to let and finding the rent unusually moderate they took it they were delighted with their new residence and often wondered that the proprietor with whom they were slightly acquainted did not either live there himself or insist on more money for it after they had been there some time his brother that is the brother of the proprietor who did not live very far off called one morning to see them and asked them how they liked the place they expressed their extreme satisfaction adding we wonder your brother does not live here himself there are reasons why it does not suit our family he answered when he was going away my friends proposed to walk through the grounds with him they had to cross a little brook not far from the house and as they did so a hare sprang past them and they all stopped and turned round to look at her by which means they had a full view of the house good heavens exclaimed the visitor there she is where inquired my friend thinking he alluded to the hare is any of your family ill asked the stranger no they answered and following the direction of his eyes they observed at one of the upper windows of the house a female figure in white and enveloped in what looked like grave clothes the visitor appeared much agitated my friend rushed back and ran up to the floor where the female had appeared and not only was there no one there but he found that the window was that of a vestibule and much too high from the ground for any one to reach on returning to their visitor he said one of us will die before this year has expired it is an unfailing omen in our family and caused us so much distress that that is the real reason why we do not live here but it concerns nobody but ourselves you will never be troubled by her visitations the destiny fell on the seer himself this time he was dead before the year had expired there is another house in the same part of the country where some time ago a young friend of mine one of three sisters went on a visit for a short time the first night after she got into bed she was startled by the most terrific scream she had ever heard which appeared close to her door she jumped up and opened it but there was nobody there the next day she mentioned the circumstance but the old lady she was visiting said her ears must have deceived her and turned the conversation but she heard it again several times and was quite sure there was no mistake when she went home she told her sisters who laughed at her but each of them went to visit subsequently at the same house and heard precisely the same thing but as it was evidently an unpleasant subject to their hostess they could get no information on the subject a near relation of mine said lord n is living in a place at present where there is very much the same annoyance and three families successively had left the house in consequence of it 
the building is large part of it very old and it is surrounded by a fine park nevertheless it has been found difficult to get a tenant or at least to keep one my relation was warned of the inconvenience before he took it it is said that a lady was murdered there by her husband at all events there is one room one of the best in the house shut up and never allowed to be opened whoever sleeps in the room under this is liable to be disturbed by extraordinary noises footsteps and moving of furniture and so forth but the most strange thing is that every now and then a dreadful piercing scream is heard through the house that brings any strangers who happen to be there out of their rooms in terror to inquire what has occurred the family who resided there before met the apparition of a lady occasionally and left the place in consequence my relations have never seen anything but everybody who stays there any time hears the screams another relation of mine a very religious person and as she belongs to the free church of scotland most opposed to the belief in ghosts went some time since to pay a visit at an old place belonging to our family on the morning after her arrival she announced at breakfast that she was going away she gave no reason but went to the consternation of her host with much difficulty he has since extracted from her that in the night an apparition appeared at the foot of her bed a man dressed in an old-fashioned brown suit he spoke to her and some conversation passed the subject of which she declares she will never disclose she says it was not a good spirit and nothing would induce her to visit the place again this house has always been said to be haunted but this is the only instance i know of the family themselves seeing anything of the sort but no better evidence could be adduced of such a phenomenon than that of the lady in question nobody ever doubted her word and a more confirmed disbeliever in ghosts never existed a rather curious thing happened to myself lately continued lord n i went to visit some friends at the lakes as they had no vacant rooms i engaged apartments near them for myself and servant the house was small quite modern and as unghostly as possible i always dined with my friends and went to my lodgings about twelve o'clock and i had been there five or six nights without anything unusual occurring on the fourth or fifth evening i had returned home rather earlier than usual and instead of going to bed i sat down to write a letter while so engaged i heard what i thought was a boy cracking a whip close to the drawing-room door i paid no attention to it at first though rather wondering at the hour chosen for the amusement however as it continued unintermittently and grew louder i got up and opened the door with the intention of desiring the child to go away there was no one there it then occurred to me that my ears must have deceived me and that the sound might have proceeded from some explosive substance in my bedroom fire the room was on the same floor and the door shut but when i opened it i found the fire almost out certainly not in a state to produce the noises i had heard i went forward to stir it and while doing so the whip was cracked over my shoulder i turned round quickly but could see nothing and i returned to the drawing-room and had just seated myself again when i was amazed to see the table rise about a foot perpendicularly into the air and at the same moment both the candles that were on it went out without being upset or even moved there was a fire so that i was not quite in the dark and i relighted them after which the whip began cracking again vigorously and cracked on till i went to bed and afterwards i stayed in these apartments a fortnight or three weeks longer and once again i heard the whip but much fainter and for a shorter time and one night there were distinct rappings in the mantelpiece and afterwards on the dressing-table i could make no discovery in regard to these phenomena and i leave it to the company to decide whether they were of a spiritual nature or not 
The only other thing of the sort that ever happened to me was this. I was traveling on the continent, and, not being very well, was lying in bed, when I suddenly saw the door open, and two of my brothers walk through the room, dressed in deep mourning. I rang the bell furiously, and the people came, but could in no way explain what had happened. I shortly received letters announcing that another brother had died at that time. I will mention another instance that occurred in our family a few years since. During my grandfather's last illness all the family were assembled at K Castle, except my brother John, with whom he was not on good terms. While we were living there, waiting to see what turn the illness would take, John died very unexpectedly, but we resolved not to mention the circumstances to Lord A, as it might affect him injuriously. It was therefore kept a profound secret. One day, some little time afterwards, Lord A had been asleep in his armchair, and on waking he suddenly exclaimed, I shall see John on Thursday. This was on Monday, and he died on the Thursday following. A relation of mine, said Mrs. L, had a friend with whom a great intimacy had subsisted for many years, but a subject of difference arose that embittered her feelings toward this lady to such a degree that she felt reconciliation impossible. They continued to live in the same town, but all intercourse was at an end. One morning lately she was lying awake in her bed when the door opened and this lady came in approaching the bedside she spoke in a friendly manner and entered into explanations with regard to the misunderstanding my relation was not frightened during this interview but when it was over and she was gone she suspected the nature of the visit when her maid came to her room she inquired if there had been any news of miss blank the servant answered none but presently afterwards a person called to mention the lady's death, which had taken place that morning. For my part, said Sir A. C., I am acquainted with a circumstance that has settled entirely any doubts I might have entertained on the subject of ghosts. Not many miles from my place in Eshur there is a seat belonging to some connections of my own. At the time I am about to refer to, an old lady was in possession, and it so happened that a matter of business arose regarding the heirs of the property, which made it necessary to refer to the title deeds. To the surprise and dismay of the family, they could not be found. A vigorous search was instituted in vain, and the circumstance so preyed on my old relation's mind that she at length committed suicide under the impression that someone else should lay claim to the estate after her death people complained that they could not live there the place they said was haunted by this old lady who with her grey hair dishevelled and dressed exactly as she used to be in her lifetime they described as walking about the house looking into drawers and cupboards and incessantly searching for her deeds we of course did not believe in the story and were not even altogether convinced when the house after being let to several strangers in succession who all gave it up on the same plea seemed destined to remain without an inhabitant it had stood empty two or three years though offered at a very low rent when a lady and gentleman from the west indies came into the neighbourhood to visit some acquaintance and being in want of a residence and hearing this was to be had on very reasonable terms they proposed to take it their friends told them of the objection made by preceding tenants but they laughed with scorn at the idea of losing so good a house on account of a ghost so they closed the bargain took possession of the place and sent for their family to join them the children, the youngest of whom was between three and four, and the eldest about ten, were, as a temporary arrangement, placed on the first night of their arrival to sleep in one room. But the next morning, when their mother went at a very early hour to see how they were, to her surprise she found them all wide awake. They were looking pale and weary, and began with one voice to complain that they had been kept awake all night by such a disagreeable old lady, who would keep coming into the room and looking for something in the drawers. 
i told her i wish she'd go away said the eldest and then she did go but she came back and we don't like her who is she mamma is she to live with us they then on being questioned described her appearance which exactly coincided with the account given by the former tenants i can vouch for the truth of these circumstances and since these children had certainly never heard a word on the subject of the apparition and had indeed no idea that it was one i think the evidence said sir a c is quite unexceptionable i should say so too if it referred to any other question said mr e a barrister who happened to be present when the story was related but on the subject of ghosts i cannot think any evidence sufficient a state of mind by no means uncommon i said and which it is of course in vain to contend with i can only wonder and admire the confidence that can venture to prejudge so interesting and important a subject of inquiry end of part six